What's up, what's up, YouTubers? This is Mr. Monkey Swag. Today, I would like to share with you guys my commemorative half dollars. So, the United States Mint produced commemorative half dollars from 1892 through 1954. So, the commemorative half dollar series is a pretty long running coin series. These half dollars were issued specifically to celebrate important events in American history. So with that, I would like to show you the first coin right here. Come on, focus. So what you see right here is a Colombian Exposition half dollar. The Colombian the Colombian half dollar was the first commemorative coin produced by the United States Mint. The United States Mint produced these coins for two years, from 1892 through 1893. As you can see, mine has mine is dated 1893. These are very very common coins. Um, these Colombian half dollars are very common coins. Uh, both the, both 1892 and 1893, both of those years, they made like almost a million of them for two years. So, yeah, very common coin. Um, so these half dollars were... These half dollars were issued to celebrate the... Uh, these, ha these Colombian half dollars were produced to celebrate Christopher Columbus's discovery of the new world so fittingly you see a portrait of columbus on the obverse on the reverse you see uh, on the reverse you see columbus's ship the santa maria and below the santa maria you see two globes representing the New World and the Old World. So, yeah. And 1492 was the year that Columbus discovered the, the New World. So, the guys who designed this coin is... The guys who designed this coin are George T. Morgan and Charles Barber. George T. Morgan was the guy who designed the Morgan Dollar... Charles Barber was the guy who designed the Barber coinage. So both George T. Morgan and Charles Barber collaborated to design this uh, Colombian half dollar. So these Colombian half dollars were sold as souvenirs at the World Fair in Chicago. So yeah, these these Colombian half dollars were sold as souvenirs at the World Fair in Chicago. I believe the World Fair were selling these half dollars for a dollar a piece, which is twice their face value. Unfortunately, uh, these coins didn't sell very well, so many of these half dollars remained unsold. So, many of these unsold half dollars were released into circulation by banks. So, these coins are very common in circulated condition. So, because of their large mintages and the fact that so many of them are circulated, you can buy these Colombian half dollars for very close to their silver value. So if you guys, you know, if any guys, if any guys, if uh, okay, if any of you stackers don't, you know, want to pay a premium for a half dollar, like for a commemorative half dollar, you can just buy the Colombian because the Colombian half dollar is very cheap. You can buy it close to the silver value, yet you can still say you own a commemorative half dollar. Okay. Next half dollar I'm going to show you is this 1923 Monroe Doctrine half dollar. So, 
so this coin celebrates the Monroe Doctrine. For any of you guys who know history, the Monroe Doctrine defined United States foreign policy for decades. So the Monroe Doctrine was the United States government's attempt to prevent European countries from further colonizing the New World. So if a European country such as Great Britain or France was to colonize a part of the New World, the United States government would declare war on that European country. So the Monroe Doctrine, um, the Monroe Doctrine establishes the New World as the United States sphere of influence. So on the obverse, you see the bus of John Quincy Adams and James Monroe. And on the reverse, you see you see the continents of North America and South America. So yeah, you see the continents of North America and South America. So if you look really closely, uh, if you look really closely, the continents of North America and South America were stylized to look like two goddesses. So at first glance, you know, this looks like some image from a, from a map. So the so the so at first glance, you know, North America and South America, they look like the image that you that you would see on a map or an or an atlas. But if you look really closely, the continents of North America and South America were designed to look like two women. They were designed to look like two goddesses. So I really like this half dollar because of the optical illusion on the on the design. Next up is this 1924 Huguenot half dollar. So, so you can see some nice original toning, some golden toning with black streaks. And on the reverse, you see more of this golden toning with the black streaks. So I really like the toning on this coin. And you see a ship on the reverse, and that's some really nice details on that on that ship. So yeah, I said Huguenot Walloon Terrasin. Terry, the founding of New Netherland. So yeah, really nice half dollar. So here's a coin that I, I'm sure many many of you guys would like. This is a 1925 California half dollar, and I'm sure many of you guys recognize this design. So many of you guys would recognize this this design as being from the Engelhard Prospector rounds. Well, well, the thing is, this coin was produced way before the Engelhard Prospector rounds. So the Engelhard Prospector rounds took their design from this half dollar. So this coin was the inspiration behind the Engelhard Prospectors. So I like to call the California half dollar the original prospector. So yeah, it celebrates California's Diamond Jubilee. So you see um, a 49er painting for gold. And on the reverse, you see a majestic grizzly bear, the state animal of California. Next up is this Oregon Trail half dollar. So, for any of you guys who know your history, the Oregon Trail was an was an important road to the West. I I like to consider the Oregon Trail to be the Route 66 before there was a Route 66. So yeah, back then this was the main road to, to traveling to the west so on the obverse you see a half naked indian guy uh, with, with a bow and behind him is a map of the united states and on the reverse you see 
on the reverse, you see uh, a wagon train. So back then, when settlers were traveling to the west, the wagon train was the main means of transportation. And you see this wagon train being pulled by a pair of oxen. The guy who does... So let's talk about the designer of this coin. The guy who designed the Oregon Trail half dollar is James Earl Fraser. James Earl Fraser was most famous for designing the Buffalo Nickel. So James Earl Fraser, the guy who designed the Buffalo Nickel, also designed the Oregon Trail half dollar. So as you can tell, James Earl Fraser, uh, you know, he he likes to incorporate Native Americans and buffaloes into his coin designs. So when you look at a James Earl Fraser coin, you know it's it's an American coin. And for that reason, James Earl Fraser is one of my favorite coin designers. So next is this half this Texas Centennial half dollar. So for any guys who know your history, Texas was its own country before it became a state. So Texas fought a war of independence with Mexico to become its own country. And the name of, of that Texas country is the Texas Republic. So you see a majestic eagle over a giant star because, you know, Texas is the Lone Star State. So this half dollar commemorates the uh, 100th anniversary of Texas as as its own country rather than a state. So on the on the reverse, you see a winged lady. She looks like an angel. And you might recognize this winged lady because the winged lady that you see on this half dollar is the same winged lady that you see on the Libertad coins. You see the resemblance? So on the Libertad, you see a winged lady right here. That's the same lady, that's the same winged lady that you see on the Texas Centennial coin. So this winged lady is not really an angel. The winged lady that you see on these coins was meant to symbolize Nike, the, the Greek goddess of victory. So next time you look at, at a Libertad or, a, or this half dollar, just know that the winged lady is not an angel. The winged lady is is Nike is Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. Behind the behind Nike, you see a building. So the building, that building that you see behind the winged lady is, I mean that that building that you see behind Nike is the Alamo. As you all know, uh. The, the Texans fought with the Mexicans to the death at the Alamo. And it is because the, of the Alamo that, that fueled the flames to the Texas Revolution. So yeah, you see the Alamo. And right next, and right beside Nike, you see the portraits of Sam Houston and Steve Austin. So Sam Houston and Steve Austin were the guys that founded the Texas Republic. So Sam Houston served as the first president of the Texas Republic. When Texas became a state, Sam Houston became a United States senator representing Texas. Okay. So yeah. So the winged lady that you see on this Texas coin is the same lady that you see on the Libertad coin. And that lady is not a an angel. That lady is... Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. But yeah, that's enough of me rambling about that. So here's the last coin I'm going to show you. This is a 1936 Bay Bridge half dollar. So, you know, as you all know, the Golden Gate Bridge is a famous symbol of San Francisco. However, San Francisco has another famous bridge. And the name of that bridge is the Oakland Bay Bridge. 
So the Oakland Bay Bridge connects San Francisco to Oakland. And this coin that you see right here commemorates the Oakland Bay Bridge. So on the obverse, you see a, you see a grizzly bear, the California state animal. And on the reverse, you see you see a you see the Oakland Bay Bridge, and there's like a lot of detail on this coin. And so you see some steamboats passing under the Bay Bridge. So here's an interesting fact on in how these coins were being sold. So here, so here's an interesting fact about how these uh, half dollars were, were being sold. So you know there are cars that pass through the Bay Bridge. So, you know, when you pass through a bridge, you, you would encounter a toll booth. And the toll booths at the bridge would sell these half dollars as souvenirs to people passing through the bridge. So I find that really interesting about these coins. So yeah, I'm sure you guys really liked to... Uh, I'm sure you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace, YouTubers.